Good morning and welcome to morning prayer this Thursday morning. You are above us, O God. You are within. You are in all things, yet contained by no thing. Teach us to seek you in all that has life, that we may see you as light of life. Teach us to search for you in our own depths, that we may find you in every living soul. Our scripture reading this morning is chapter 3 of Matthew's Gospel. While Jesus was living in the Galilean hills, John, called the baptizer, was preaching in the desert country of Judea. His message was simple and austere, like his desert surroundings. Change your life. God's kingdom is coming. John and his message were authorised by Isaiah's prophecy. Thunder in the desert, prepare for God's arrival, make the road smooth and straight. John dressed in a camel hair habit tied at the waist by a leather strap. He lived on a diet of locusts and wild field honey. People pulled out of Jerusalem, Judea and the Jordanian countryside to hear and see him in action. There at the Jordan River, those who came to confess their sins were baptised into a changing life. When John realised that a lot of Pharisees and Sadducees were showing up for a baptismal experience because it was becoming the popular thing to do, he exploded. Brood of snakes! What do you think you're doing slithering down here to the river? Do you think a little water on your snake skin is going to make any difference? It's your life you must change, not your skin. And don't think you can pull rank by claiming Abraham as father. Being a descendant of Abraham is neither here nor there. Descendants of Abraham are a dime a dozen. What counts is your life. Is it green and flourishing? Because if it's deadwood, it goes on the fire. I'm baptising you here in the river, turning your old life in for a kingdom life. The real action comes next. The main character in this drama. Compared to him, I'm a mere stagehand will ignite the kingdom life within you, a fire within you, the Holy Spirit within you, changing you from the inside out. He's going to make you a clean house, make a clean sweep of your lives. He'll place everything true in its proper place before God. Everything false he'll put out with the trash to be burned. Jesus then appeared, arriving at the Jordan River from Galilee. He wanted John to baptise him. John objected, I'm the one who needs to be baptised, not you. But Jesus insisted, do it. God's work, putting things right all these centuries, is coming together right now in this baptism. So John did it. The moment Jesus came out up out of the baptismal waters, the skies opened and he saw God's spirit. It looked like a dove descending and landing on him. And along with the spirit, a voice. This is my son, chosen and marked by my love, delight of my life. That reading is so familiar to us, so powerful. But uh, the theologian Tom Wright has some interesting things to say. So, and usually for me, I'm going to read a chapter from one of his books, which focuses on Jesus' baptism by John. So in the words of Tom Wright. It's safe to say that John was as surprised as we are, or at least as we should be if we read this passage without knowing what's coming. To get the flavour, imagine that we are going to a huge concert hall, packed to the doors with eager and excited music lovers. We all have our programmes in hand, waiting for the thunderous music to begin. We know what it ought to sound like. This will be music for a battle, for a victory, thunder and lightning, and explosions of wonderful noise. The concert manager comes on stage and declares in ringing tones that the famous musician has arrived. 
He gets us all on our feet to welcome with an ovation the man who is going to fulfil all their expectations. As we stand there eagerly, a small figure comes onto the stage. He doesn't look at all like what we were expecting. He is carrying not a conductor's baton to bring the orchestra to life, but a small flute. As we watch, shocked into silence, he plays gently and softly, a tune quite different to what we had imagined. But as we listen, we start to hear familiar themes played in a new way. The music is haunting and fragile, winging its way into our imagination and hopes and transforming them. And as it reaches its close, as though at a signal, the orchestra responds with a new version of the music we had been expecting all along. Now listen to John as the concert manager, whipping us into excitement at the soloist who is going to appear. He's coming. He's more powerful than me. He will give you God's wind and God's fire, not just water. He'll sort you out. He'll clear out the mess. He'll clean up God's farm so that only the good wheat is left. We are on our feet, expecting a great leader. Perhaps the living God himself, sweeping into the hall with a great explosion, a blaze of light and colour, transforming everything in a single blow. And instead, we get Jesus. The Jesus we have only met so far in Matthew's Gospel, as a baby with a price on his head. A Jesus who comes and stands humbly before John, asking for baptism, sharing the penitential mood of the rest of Judea, Jerusalem and Galilee. A Jesus who seems to be identifying himself, not with a God who sweeps all before him in judgment, but with the people who are themselves facing that judgment and needing to repent. John, of course, is horrified. He seems to have known that Jesus was the one he was waiting for. But why then? Would he be coming for baptism? What's happened to the agenda? What's happened to the wind and fire, to the clearing out of God's farm? Surely, if anything, he, John, needs to be baptised by Jesus himself? Jesus' reply tells us something vital about the whole gospel story that is going to unfold before our surprised gaze. Yes, he is coming to fulfil God's plan, the promises which God made ages ago and has never forgotten. Yes, these are promises which will blow God's wind, God's spirit through the world, which will bring the fire of God's just judgment on evil wherever it occurs, and which will rescue God's penitent people once and for all from every kind of exile to which they have been driven. But if he, Jesus, is to do all this, this is how he must do it by humbly identifying himself with God's people, by taking their place, sharing their penitence, living their life and ultimately dying their death. What good will this do? And how will it bring about the result that John and his audience were longing for? To those questions, Matthew's full answer is, read the rest of the story. But we can already capture a glimpse what the answer will be when Jesus comes up out of the water. Israel came through the water of the Red Sea and was given the law, confirming their status as God's son, God's firstborn. Jesus came up from the water of baptism and received God's spirit, God's wind, God's breath, in a new way, declaring him to be God's son, Israel in person. The dove, though, which for a moment embodies and symbolises the spirit, indicates that the coming judgment will not be achieved through a warlike or vindictive spirit, but will mean making of peace. Judgment itself is judged by the spirit, just as Jesus will at last take the judgment upon himself and make an end of it. Oh, let's spend some time in prayer now. that you have made us in the image of your own mystery. Thanks be to you, O God. 
that in the soul of every human being there are depths beyond naming and heights greater than knowing. Thanks be to you. Grant us the grace of inner sight this day, that we may see you as the self within all selves. Grant us the grace of love this day, that amidst the pain and disfigurement of life, we may find the treasure that is unlocked by love. That amidst the pain and disfigurement of our own life, we may know the richness that lies buried in the human soul. Before us in the planned shape of this day, we look for unexpected surgings of new life. Around us and the people whom we know and love, we look for unopened gifts of promise. Within us, in the familiar sanctuary of our own soul, we look for shinings of the everlasting light. Before us, around us, within us, we look for your life-giving mystery, O God. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you today.